stones and mortar, bricks and bitumen are the subject of our first reading today from the book of Genesis. From the first to the second, we have a distinct progression with quite a deliberate intention. The sacred author tells us that they used for stones, bricks. They used for mortar bitumen. With bricks and bitumen, you can do a lot more than with mere stones and mortar. These people had attained to scientific knowledge, to what was, in those days, a considerable degree of natural perfection, which allowed them to do far more than their ancestors had done from a material, practical or pragmatic point of view. And so the tower was erected and it stood high above every other building on earth at the time, the Tower, of course, of Babel. How did God respond to this innovation? It wasn't with joy. It wasn't with complacency. The Lord saw that in their building there was pride. They were beginning, on account of their success, to place their trust in themselves and to turn away from the Lord their God, their Maker. And so God, who is always true and good and just, not wishing to abandon these creatures that he had made, but being obliged to bring upon them some sort of lesson to keep them from the excesses of depravity that pride leads to, had to scatter them had to humiliate them, had to bring a certain confusion into their minds so that this occasion of sin, natural perfection, as it had become for them, would not lead them to their eventual ruin. Dear brothers and sisters, the day with Mary is an apostolate of works. We will have occasion to speak during the course of this coming week about interviews which we conducted in order to gather material precisely for this course and for the production of a certain number of DVDs. We went around interviewing certain priests. And one of them, if I remember rightly, it was the abbot of Buckfast Abbey in the southwest of England, said something to the effect that when the day with Mary first came to the abbey, it was a bit of a car boot operation, is an English expression. Basically what we're saying is that it was something knocked together almost on that day and somehow it managed to work and everybody was very happy. Since then though, he commented, having seen A Day With Mary more recently, it has become something much more professional, much more slick. We have our own van. The only thing lacking is the beautiful word Day With Mary on the side of it. But a nice van it is. We have a well-organized team. Someone said that we function a bit like a SWAT team. Special weapons and tactics in a church. When we arrive, it all just happens. There are many interesting comments. Now, this is important because without a certain amount of material capability, shall we say, the day with Mary will not reach its objectives. And yet this must not be for us an occasion of a fall, like the bricks and the bitumen was for those poor souls about whom we have read. Humility is one of the foundations of this apostolate. Why? Because among all the virtues of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom the day with Mary seeks to make present, almost expressing in essential terms its mission. Among all of those virtues of the Blessed Virgin Mary, humility stands out. Humility in the Virgin is the absolutely necessary precondition for her fullness of grace. And it is because of her fullness of grace that she is the mother who is a strong woman, the one who is able to stand unflinching, unmoving at the foot of the cross, the one who is able to cooperate 
in a way that reflects our Lord's own response to his Father's command. Throughout her life, Jesus was not yes, no, but yes, yes. So also the Blessed Virgin Mary was yes, yes to God. Humility is essential. If we fail in this primary virtue, we will certainly, by that very fact, fail in our apostolate. We cannot make Mary present where there is even a whiff of pride. This, then, is our first lesson. Our Lord talks about an adulterous and sinful generation in the Gospel. And he talks again about the cross and about following him by carrying it on our shoulders. If we are to be united to God, we must confess him. We must not confess the devil. We must not confess the world. We must have in our heart, in our mind and on our lips, so to speak in the testimony of our hands, the works of God. Faith is important here. Faith which manifests in practical terms our humility because only the humble soul bows his head to the yoke of the obedience of faith. These two virtues, faith and obedience, are supremely important then for us. They allow the whole of our apostolic activity to be supernaturalized so that grace flows. And then, almost notwithstanding our natural weaknesses and our own shortcomings, the fruit of the apostolate will not fail. Though we might perhaps never see it or hear about it with our own senses, it will be there. Someone touched in a wonderful way by the Holy Spirit. Someone who leaves the day with Mary suddenly interested in Catholicism for the first time, maybe. Dear brothers and sisters, these are very much the fruits that we wish to gain for the purpose of glorifying God as our response to his loving invitation to work in this apostolate. St. Augustine teaches us how our Lord desires to give gifts to us He makes us ask for the grace that we are to receive and then he bestows that gift upon us. He enlarges our heart. Let us then pray today for a heart full of faith and rooted deeply in humility so that we might always sow about us the good odour of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary to the greatest possible glory of God the upbuilding of the church and the salvation of many souls. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.